Here we are at the Performance Center for 2K15, Sam Roberts and Sammy Zane. Hello. Sammy, what's the haps? The haps? Eh, well, here we are. Uh, oh, I'm in a video game. Yeah. Yeah, there's that little detail. Um, and, and I guess they're unveiling some details here about 2K15. I'm honored to be a part of it, and uh, it's a pretty big day here. It's interesting what's going on, I feel like, with NXT, because like you said, you're in this game. Yeah. Mattel's already said they're doing an action figure. Which is... And, so and, cool, and yeah. You, yeah, and there was a thing where it's like you just sit in developmental waiting to be called up, waiting to be called up, and now, I mean, is 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 it still that much of a wait when all this stuff is already happening? It's so different. It's such a unique time period in the history of developmental, which goes back a really long time. I think, I think the first guys in developmental ever were maybe Mark Henry and The Rock. So I think it goes back to like 96 or something. Um, it's a very, very unique time because, as you said, developmental used to sort of always be this sort of rock, this yeah. island that you were on, and you didn't know if they knew what you were doing. You just felt like you were wallowing away and, you know, until something maybe happened or something didn't. Yeah. But now it's unbelievable the fact that NXT was featured on an episode of Monday Night Raw, which right. is a huge, huge deal. Like, not NXT, the show that was NXT, the reality show or whatever, when NXT first started. This, is so, this was, here's our developmental guys on our flagship show yeah. on the first week head to head with the NFL, which is just a huge deal, you know? So it's so, so different. And uh, obviously Triple H is at the helm of all this and he's a visionary and he's creating this vision and it's coming to fruition. It's really cool to be a part of it. That first or oh, first or second generation of guys, first or second crop of guys that are a product of this NXT integration. Yeah. Yeah. What's, the, what's the attitude like uh, when you NXT guys come to do a match on Raw? Because it appeared to me as a viewer that it was pretty obvious that the four of you have decided we have to go out and steal the show tonight. Uh, what's the attitude amongst the other guys that know you're kind of there to steal the show a little bit? The crazy thing is, um, and I've been doing a lot of these live events lately on the road, uh -huh. and um, it really hits me sometimes. Like about a week ago, I don't know where we were, Hampton, Virginia, or something like that. And there's a little viewing area where you can watch obviously the show you know on a tv screen and as i was watching i kind of looked around the room and everybody in that room at that time uh was either someone i was in nxt with or was in nxt with so there's like biggie you know there was um rusev and there's you know there's the ascension and there's tyler breeze and there's adrian neville and myself and uh you know bo dallas and bray wyatt and the wyatt family these are all people who are in nxt with me and now they're all on the main roster. We're it's it's not that again. It goes back to that integration. Like it's not that who are these new NXT guys kind of trying to steal the show. It's like right. oh yeah, we know you. We've known you for <laughs> yeah. Hey, I saw you last week. You know right. what I mean? Like we worked with you. <laughs> yeah, we all work together now. So it's it's kind of um, I think there's a sense. There is definitely that sense of uh, opportunism, and there is that chip on your shoulder. Like I'm gonna kick the door in. You know what I mean? You yeah. want to do that? It's kind of hard in six minutes, but you know right. you do you do your best. Every, every second you get on television is uh, an opportunity. So it just has more to do with the fact that there's more eyes on you. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. yeah. So what's, your, what's the first thought that goes on in your brain when you find out that Kevin Steen, after all this time, is officially yeah. signed and coming to NXT? Uh, it's awesome. Obviously, I'm really, really happy for him because uh, he's really been there, like, not from day one, but definitely from day two of my entire career. Yeah. So, like, it's crazy to see that we're both here. And it's weird because if you asked me, I don't know, 12, 13, 12, 12 years ago when I met him, or 11 years ago when I met him, hey, you know, like, it, I'd say, no, you're crazy. But, like, at the same time, be like, no, it makes sense. You right. know, like, we're just going to keep doing this, right. and eventually we'll be here. It was, it was We had a conversation right after WrestleMania this year. Yeah. And you, I'd never seen anyone so optimistic ah. about where ah. WWE was going right after WrestleMania when you saw Daniel Bryan and oh, you saw The that, Shield yeah, yeah. and you saw all these guys – yeah. What, what, what were you feeling? I, I was probably on a really weird life high. Cause yeah, I was like, that's what it was. My guys, we're doing it. We're doing it, you know. But yeah. um, especially at WrestleMania, because that's really where you're like, I don't know. That's where for me, it's it, like WrestleMania was really because I, I was also. I think I might have told you this, but I was in the sort of, you know, where the production area is in the arena. Sure. Like where the hard camera is right, right there. Right, so right, right. I was kind of snuck up there, and so I was like ensconced like just surrounded by 70,000 people like I was in it yeah so it's one thing when you're backstage and these are your friends or your peers or people you've worked with for years but it's a different thing to be in the middle of it and be like holy crap yeah like, 
Daniel Bryan's so popular, you know what I mean? Yeah, when like, did this happen? Yeah, like, I remember being in Philadelphia Armory with him in, like, 05. What is going on now? Yeah. It's, so that's amazing. So that's when you really, like, it gets to hit you. Uh-huh. And I think that's important, you know, to take a step back. Like, we're all doing it, and we're all like, oh, we all work for WWE, and we're all super cool now. But, like, <laughs> sometimes, you, I think in life, not just in wrestling or whatever it is, you got to take a step back and be like, oh, man, cool, right? Yeah. Like, pretty cool. Yeah, so it's I, really, this is happening. This is it, what we dreamed about. Yeah, like, let's not like, pretend we're too need, cool. Yeah, you got to take a step back and yeah. realize it. And, uh, again, being part of a video game is one of those things I, I could just be like, oh, oh yeah, I'm in the new game, like, whatever, pick it up. <laughs> right. But part of me has got to take a step back and be like, oh, I'm in a video game. Right. Like, what? Crazy. Which is a good reminder for people that have been in this, because you've been in this for over 10 years, that there are still these things that you should be excited about. Yeah, well, I mean... I don't want to go into life philosophy here. But Why not? Yeah, Let's know. do you, it. You don't want to be, I don't think you want to be jaded. And I think when you start getting jaded as a performer, yeah. you start to die. And as a human, you start to die. So, but like, let's try to focus on performance and not <laughs> life and this big, mir- like the big miracle of life or uh-huh. whatever. But um, yeah, like as a performer, I feel like you don't ever want to get too jaded because again, that's when you start maybe even like phoning it in. Right. And you start like going through the motions and people feel that. They really do. I don't know. I think I definitely feel it. When I'm watching it sometimes, I'm like, come on. Right. You know what I mean? You just feel it sometimes. And I think the greats, you can never tell if they're having one of those, uh, you know, tonight we're going to give it 35% type nights, you know, like. You just have to make sure your 35% is as good as anybody could imagine. They don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know. That's the true greats. Like, they, they, you never know. Every night's a, every night's sort of a WrestleMania, you know. So after you get signed to developmental, after being in the business for as many years as you had been, did you have to actively step back and say, all right, I have to realize there are people here that can teach me things? Like when you, or when yeah. you came in, were you ready to, okay, I'm a blank slate? Oh, no, no, it's an adjustment yeah. for sure, yeah. Um, man, it's so, it's so difficult to say, and uh, God, I'm not sure how honest to be here, but... Um, it's me, you can be yeah, honest. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Come on, it's Sam, yeah, me, yeah, I mean, buddy, yeah. No, um, definitely... It, it, I don't know, man. It's really up and down. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that's just change. Change is up and down. It's not like it's not clean. You know, you, you go through a breakup. It's not like, all right, we're broken up and we'll I'll go this way. You right. go that way. Like you still kind of talk and then one of you gets like lonely and texts one in the middle of the <laughs> night or whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not clean. It's right. not clean. It's not a clean break. So it's the same thing with this sort of adjustment. It's not always clean. And you take two steps forward and maybe you take a step back. Can't speak for everyone. This is mm-hmm. me. Right. You know, uh, took two steps forward, took a step back, took five steps forward, took three steps back. Took, you know, it's just all over the page. Right. Um, and uh, but ultimately, that is that was the mindset. Is that? But here's the truth: they they didn't try to break me or whatever people think. Like I don't know. I read all kinds of crazy things, but it's not about changing you and making you something you're not. It's just fine tuning, um, and that's that's really the thing. It's not like this whole different WWE world. I mean, in a weird way it is, but in, in a lot of ways, it's just they knew what I've been doing for a very long time, so they're not here to break me and change me and make me something I'm not. They're just fine-tuning the little details to make it more accessible to what they are hoping to accomplish. Right. So, and I understand that. And you probably have to get to a place where you realize that they might know their their audience oh, better than absolutely. you. absolutely, yes, yeah. yes. That goes without saying. You do get like, look, I'm being honest here. There are those times and I'm like, no, but I know what works for me. Trust me, I know me, I know me, you right. know? And I think you need that. Yeah. Because if you're too kind of like, yes, anything, like, you need to be like. Prideful, a little you bit. You need to know your own heart, mm-hmm. you do. Because nobody knows you like you. But at the end of the day, yes, at the end of the day, <laughs> WWE's done okay, <laughs> right? Yeah. They've done okay for themselves. So yeah. maybe you should just listen and maybe you'll do okay too, you know? So with the video game, with the action figure, with the raw matches, with the kind of notability that you've been getting, are you still sitting there itching? Like, when are you going to bring me up on the main roster? Or are you kind of cool? Ah, uh, like, I don't know. I, I don't know how to answer this really because I, I think people want you to be like, you should be angry. You should be like chomping at the bit. But like, I know it's going to, like, I don't know. I could die tomorrow. But like, I, it'll happen. Right. You know, and uh, I think if you get too hung up on like, when's it going to happen? You kind of miss the beauty of the ride. Right. You know, they say it's not the destination, it's the journey. And yeah. I kind of believe that anyways in my life and my journey to get here yeah. has been awesome. And I, I've talked about it so much and about going all these places and doing all these things. But if my attitude while I was doing that was like, God, why am I talking WWE yet? Then I wouldn't have enjoyed, you the know, process. Yeah, being yeah. on the road and traveling and living this awesome life that I'm so 
And you'd probably yeah. be kind of an asshole and they wouldn't put you in the video game, would they? Maybe not. Probably uh, not. Yeah, I really don't know. All, yeah. all I know is, um, you know, while I'm here and now, and even doing this interview, I'm focused on this interview, you yeah. know? And when I'm on Raw, I'll focus on Raw. And when, you know, right now I'm in NXT and I want to win that championship and I want to focus on the goals at hand. And the rest kind of falls into line. Did Gillian you know, Jacobs ever get back to you? God, no, she didn't. But Gillian, what are you doing? God, I really have the hots for you her. You do, yeah. don't everybody does. It was that interview you did. Yeah. No, it was. No, no, because she's pretty. Duh, like, she's pretty. But it was that interview when she, like, referenced PWG. Because I, I heard that she was at PWG show once, yeah. right? But I never saw her. But then I actually m may have heard that... Uh, I think she bought an El Generico shirt. She mentioned, she, she mentioned, I said, yeah. I tested her. I said, yeah, right, you're a PWG fan. Yeah, you know, who'd you dropped, see? She dropped Generico. Yeah, and Kevin Steen. And, and right. Chris Hero, I think. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, um, and I've heard a lot about this El Generico, so I thought, like, man, that's cool. Right. If know? she likes Generico, yeah, she's got to right. like you. Yeah, right, no, I don't know, but, like, and the fact that she doesn't drink, and I don't drink, so I was right. like, oh, God, she's super cool, and she's pretty, I'm an idiot, anyways. Well, Gillian, now we've don't, put it out there. Don't, 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 you got to put don't it out in the show universe. Her any of this. You have to put Please, it in the universe. The you know how it works. Well, <laughs> listen, she's going to love you now. Yeah. You're in a video game. Oh, God. Thanks to 2K15, we're matchmakers Let's here. Just cut that whole last part of the interview. <laughs> God. Well, thank you yeah. very much, Sammy Zane. <laughs> right. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for your time.